Hi class, this is Dr. Heather Austin Robillard, and this lecture is going to be an introduction to treatment planning. Um, in order to get some more information about how to treatment plan, which is the next step after a substance abuse evaluation, would be to take another class, which is the um, systemic treatment of addictive disorders. But in today's lecture, we're gonna just briefly talk about treatment planning. So just to review again of the ASAM criteria, this is what's going to help you with the assessment or the substance abuse evaluation that you're doing for writing exercise two. You're wanting to um, use these six dimensions to create a holistic um, assessment of the individual, kind of get their individualistic needs, which will then give us information about which level of care is um, best suited for this individual client. The ASAM continuum of care, as you've seen in previous lectures, goes from 0.5 to 4. So the higher the number, the more intense the treatment or continuum of care is. So just to brief you on, um, there is early intervention, which are like those DARE programs, anything like that. Level one is outpatient. So that can be a number of different um, avenues. It could be 12 step groups, it could be group therapy, it could be individual counseling or family counseling. And then there is um, intensive outpatient or partial hospitalization. So those are where you still live out in the community or in your residence, but you attend a either partial hospitalization, so a day treatment where you go into the residential center for just the day and then you go and spend the night at your own house, or an intensive outpatient is where you're just going in for three to five days a week for a couple hours uh, to get some more intense group therapy. And then there is residential or inpatient. And again, uh, different residential centers have different um, obligations or supervision or intensity, um, but typically those residential or inpatient centers mean that you're actually going to be staying there uh, for anywhere from 15 to six months. Um, and you have typically some healthcare providers on site, but it's not as stocked with staff as like an inpatient hospital would be. So intensive inpatient or hospitalization is more where you have somebody monitoring you 24 seven. And so those are typically for individuals who are at high risk for medical issues or suicidality. And so again, the continuum of care is important because at the end of your substance abuse evaluation, you are providing recommendations for what you think the best level of care for them is. And this needs to have evidence based off of what you have shown thus far in your substance abuse evaluation. So any screening tools like withdrawal risk or suicidal tools to identify whether they need a higher level of care because of their suicidality, um, any uh, lack of support from their home, which would increase their relapse prevention, co-occurring disorders, all of those would give you some more insight about which level of care that they would need. Now some clients are going to give you insight into what level of care they think they need, like they don't want to go to residential treatment. And so some of that would give you some um, insight into what would be the best recommendation. However, you want to make sure you note that in your substance abuse evaluation um, of what you're recommending that would be likely that the client would go to, but is also based off of the dimensions that you've assessed for them. So treatment planning is kind of the next step after you've assessed, diagnosed, and recommended recommended treatment for the client. So typically treatment planning is going to come into any place. It can be in private practice if you're just an individual therapist. Um, they definitely have treatment planning when you go into a residential 30-day um, treatment center. And so part of treatment planning is diagnosing of the problem. So if you've done a substance abuse evaluation, you've likely already have done this part. Um, it also talks about the different symptoms of this substance use disorder or problem. So any behaviors like blacking out, withdrawal, all the things that you've kind of assessed within your substance abuse evaluation. Where it differs is we start talking about the goals for the client and the clinical goals that the treatment team has. So what would the treatment team like to see differently within 30 days? That would show that this client is making progress. And we wanna make sure that those goals are specific and objective 
um, and measurable. So we don't want to just say we would like them to have decreased mental health issues. We want to have specific goals. We would like them to take ownership for their alcoholism by going through the first three steps of the 12 steps. We would like them to participate in DBT for six months in order to show commitment to their treatment. We would like them to have a reduction in hallucinations, so something that they can measure and that is specific. And then there's objectives of treatment. So these should be based off of the problems that the client's having and the goals that both the, the client and the clinical team have. And then how you're gonna complete those objectives. So those would be those interventions, um, attending 12-step uh, groups, uh, participating in couple and family therapy. And then you also wanna list the frequency of that. So they're going to attend group five days a week, or they're gonna attend couples therapy at least once a week, or they're gonna attend 90 meetings in 90 days. Um, and depending on what type of treatment plan this is, whether um, it's the first one or the final, then you would have information about what they would do next. So this would be signatures of agreement. So the treatment plan is basically a contract between the provider and the client. So they're committing to what the treatment plan is, is, done, is saying, which is why it might be important to kind of collaborate with your client to make sure that they're gonna utilize and agree to this treatment planning. Treatment plan plans are written documents just like substance abuse evaluations that discuss the problems and the treatments that are individualized for the client's needs. They typically are updated to reflect any changes. So there can be like an initial treatment plan when somebody first enters a residential setting. Um, it can be updated depending on different changes like medication, uh, new information about substance uses or health reasons. Um, there can also be like a final or what we would call a discharge treatment planning. So what would their aftercare look like? When we're writing these treatment plans, we do wanna take into consideration what their diagnosis is, any medical treatment needed or uh, history of medical treatment, their current relationship issues, their motivation and readiness for change, their cooperation and commitment to the treatment plan, the current setting or living conditions, and whatever their home environment might look like. Um, so for example, if their home environment is in a drug den, we might want them to go to a residential center so that way they can get out of that situation. Again, you will learn more about treatment planning if you decide to take the uh, to take the systemic treatment of addictive disorders class, which is ADRS 4325. But I just wanted to give you a little brief overview of what would be the next step after completing a substance abuse evaluation. Thank you and have a great day.